Hi everybody! In this video tutorial I will present a practical example of a three-level meta-analysis using the R software. Specifically in this example we will look at a three-level meta-analysis focused on the association between paternal anxiety and child emotional problems, which is also the broad focus of my PhD project. The dataset that I'm going to use in this tutorial is available as an attachment so that you can have a closer look at it in your own time. And this is just a screenshot of the CSV file. I have already described what each of the columns contains. Anyway, just looking at it, we can see that the data has a nested structure with the individual effect sizes representing level 2 nested within samples, which represent level this is a helpful schematic representation of the structure of the data from the image, which I have uh, uh, borrowed from one of the recommended resources, the uh, three-level organization of the data becomes clear. So here we have the results of individual participants that are pooled in uh, primary studies. Here in level 2 we can see that different primary studies use the same sample and here we have level 3 where the aggregated cluster effects are pooled in a three-level meta-analysis. Okay, so here we are in R Studio. The first step is to install, if we haven't already, and call the packages that we need to run our analysis. Also the R code is provided as an attachment so that you can try to conduct analysis that are part of these tutorials but also uh, adapt the code for your own uh, studies and your own data. I have also included this bit of code because it is uh, recommended to uh, keep the R environment clean and tidy. Once we have called the packages we want to import and read our data that we have named anxiety dataset. Once imported in R, it is helpful to use the head function to see the general structure of our data and also to keep it as a point of reference while conducting our analysis. Okay, so how do we fit our random effects three-level model in R? We can use the RMAMD function in the metacall package and here I have listed the most important arguments for this function and I've also specified what they refer to in our data file. So we definitely need the calculated effect sizes and when using Pearson's R correlation coefficients, like in our case, it is recommended to transform them to Fisher Z for the analysis and then when interpreting the results we can transform them back to uh, Pearson's R. So in our case here, we refer to the Fisher Z column in our data file. We then need the variance of the calculated effect sizes, the study labels, and also the name of the data set. Then we need the test that we want to apply for our regression coefficient and the method used to estimate the model parameters. Just a note to say that this is a matter of choice and I do recommend to check the options that are available and to choose what is best for you uh, and your own data. Random is actually the most important argument for our function because it is where we specify that we want a nested random effects model. In our example, just as a reminder, individual effect sizes represent level 2 and they are nested within samples which represent level 3. So how do we specify these in our function? The general structure of the for formula is this one and this translates in our example to this uh, formula. So the cluster rep is represented by the sample IDs and the effects within cluster is represented by the effect sizes of the individual studies IDs. So the complete, complete function uh, in our R code looks like this. So this is filled with all the uh, actual columns in our data file. And here we have the output in R. 
So what is important to note here is this part where the random effects variances are calculated for each level of our model. So the sigma 2.1 shows the level 3 between cluster variance and the sigma 2.2 shows the variance within clusters, so the level 2. We can also see, as I specified here, this part, so the number of groups on each level. Level 3 has 27 groups, which is uh, um, the 27 included samples, and these 27 samples contain 116 effect sizes. Then, importantly, we have the uh, model results. So here we see that the estimate of our pooled effect is Z0.15, and we also see the 95% uh, confidence interval here. To facilitate the interpretation of the results, we can transform the effect back to uh, a normal Pearson's R correlation coefficient, and to do this we can use the ESC package. And this is the bit of code that we need, so we convert Z to R, and here are the results. So it is also important to quantify the heterogeneity in our meta-analysis, so both for level 2 and level 3, because we are running a 3-level meta-analysis. So this is the code that we need to do that, and for this we are using the I-squared statistics, that is just one of the options that are available to us. And here is the summary of the, um, of the uh, I-squared statistic. We can see the total heterogeneity for our meta-analysis, and also how it is distributed in level 2 and in level 3. It is also interesting to see um, this uh, visual representation of the heterogeneity. So here we can use the plot I squared um, code, and here we see the uh, variance that is not uh, um, part of the sampling error. This is the total, and this is how it is uh, split in the uh, two levels, while here is the uh, sampling error variance. It is also very useful and uh, very common to obtain a visual summary of the meta-analysis results, and this can be done using forest plots. The, uh, this one, so the general forest function, would just give uh, uh, a list of all the effect sizes in our meta-analysis and it would not be representative of the nested structure of our data. Uh, anyway, I do recommend uh, checking and learning more about forest plots directly in uh, R, because there are useful examples. So to obtain a forest plot that reflects the nested structure of our data, we can create a forest plot that, show, that shows only aggregated effects for each sample, and this is just an approximate representation of the three-level meta-analysis. This is the bit of code that we need to do that, uh, and I won't explain this in details, but in any case, we are basically running a new meta-analysis of aggregated effects. So this is what the code looks like, and of course I've specified what I want uh, in my forest plot, but as I said before, it is useful to see all the potential, potential arguments that are in this function and the options that are available. And this is our forest plot, so we can see that we have the samples, here we have the number of estimates for each sample, here we have the uh, effect sizes and their confidence interval, and here we also have the weight of each of them. Uh, just a reminder that these are Fisher Z, and also the final, the pooled estimate, is a Fisher Z. Uh, and we have the 95% confidence intervals. Okay, so we run our three-level meta-analysis in R. We have obtained our pooled effect size, our variance components, we have quantified our uh, heterogeneity in level 3 and level 2, 
how do we present the findings? It is uh, common and also very useful to have a summary table. So in this table we can see that we have the number of effect sizes, the number of samples, the pooled uh, R, so the effect size, the 95% uh, competence interval, the P, and the I uh, squared statistic for level 3 and level 2. We can also summarize our results in a written format, and this is an example of how we can report our results in a, an academic paper, for example. Finally, I recommend these two resources to learn more about meta-analysis in general, meta-analysis in R, three-level meta-analysis. These are really helpful resources. Okay, so we have reached the end of the tutorial. Thank you for listening and I hope you find this resource a helpful introduction to three-level meta-analysis in R.